Hello and welcome parents and pupils to the Year 9 Options Evening. Sadly, like most things these days, this presentation is coming to you virtually. You might think that, as teachers, we're used to talking in front of a screen, but I can tell you with absolute certainty that this is not the case. We would have loved to have hosted this face-to-face -face on the school site, but unfortunately that has not been possible. Prior to the Christmas holidays, I spent a great deal of time talking to pupils about the next academic year, and there were a variety of different feelings about entering Key Stage 4 as you can imagine. The vast majority were chomping at the bit to get started, however, others were still unsure as to the path that they were going to take. Whatever their position, one thing remained constant. They understood the significance of the next step. It was a rapid start to the academic year, and there was an overwhelming sense of relief to have the school back and operational. The children overcame a lot of obstacles during the autumn term, and this culminated in the year group sitting their exams prior to the holidays. The feedback from this experience has been overwhelmingly positive, and should help to shine a bit of light on what direction to take as we embark on the options process. So now we arrive at the point where certain decisions need to be made. Whilst it may be a bit daunting for some, I do not want to lose sight of what an exciting time it is for Year 9. This is the first time that they have had the opportunity to make decisions regarding their education and I am confident that the information that has been made available will assist you in making the right decisions for yourselves. I will now be handing over to Mr Rossiter who is going to talk you through the process and try to make things a little bit more transparent. So that's goodbye from me from now uh, and I look forward to having you on site as soon as possible. Take care. Good evening and thank you for taking the time to watch this introductory presentation. My name is Chris Rossiter and I am one of the assistant head teachers here at King's and part of my role is to coordinate the options process. Hopefully most of you will also find time to look at the options booklet which can be accessed from the link on the school comms we've sent you as well as on the school website. So what does the Key Stage 4 curriculum look like? The core curriculum which all pupils continue to study includes English, Maths, Science, PE, Tutor Time and an Assembly. These subjects take 15 out of the 25 periods available per week, leaving 10 periods for options. GCSEs have changed over the last few years and the content and scope of examination is far greater than it ever has been. The rigorous questioning and depth of knowledge needed to gain success in your chosen subject areas are more important than ever. In addition, we are regularly in contact with our local colleges and they tell us that they are now starting to place a greater emphasis on what they call average point score. This is the average grade of all of the GCSEs that pupils have taken. The colleges then use this to decide pathways for their pupils to follow. To support our pupils with the greater depth required for Key Stage 4 assessed subjects, we have, we have adapted our timetable last year so that pupils can study two of their four options for three hours in Year 10 and two hours in Year 11, with the other two options being studied for two hours in Year 10 and three in Year 11. Our aim throughout the options process is to give pupils access to curriculum choices that are appropriate for them. To do this, pupils follow one of three possible pathways. English Band X or Y 1 and 2, that is the additional pathway. English Band X or Y, sets 3 and 4, access the core pathway. English, bands, English sets X or Y, sets 5 and 6, access the foundation pathway. I do want to stress that the pathways are not there to segregate, but to guide pupils towards courses that they can succeed in. There is also lots of choices in each pathway. I'd like to give you a brief overview of the three pathways. In the additional pathway, all pupils continue with their foreign language. We think this is essential, partly because a lack of a foreign language GCSE can limit entry to some GCSEs, but also because of the global economy and job market within which we operate and uh, within which we want our students to thrive. This gives pupils in the additional pathway three other choices from a wide range of GCSEs. In the core pathway, pupils also make four choices from a wide range of GCSEs. We would strongly recommend that pupils in this pathway continue with their foreign language 
for the reasons already outlined. In the foundation pathway, pupils also have access to a wide range of courses. Additionally though, some pupils following this pathway will have the opportunity to spend a day per week studying a level one course at Peter Simmons or Sparshall College. To be, to be considered for a college course, pupils need to have good records for both attendance and behaviour. If accepted on a college course, this replaces subjects chosen in blocks one and two. We do also offer a small number of OCR national qualifications and these are available in all three pathways. Please look at the headings in the booklet which will denote the qualifications studied. If your son or daughter is keen to study the three sciences at separate GCSEs, they will not need to opt for triple science in either block one or block four of the options forms. This will give them an average of six and a half lessons per week over the two years studying the three sciences. Now I'm sure you've heard of the English Baccalaureate, which is intended to encourage the study of a balanced academic curriculum. The five EBAC subjects are English, Maths, Science, Humanities, which is Geography or History, and a foreign language, ancient or modern. We support this by helping guide our pupils towards selecting options which meet these requirements. My general advice would be to avoid being too career focused at this stage. It is best to aim for broad and balanced rather than narrow and specialised. Please also check that your child is not making choices based upon a favourite teacher or being overly influenced by what their friends choose. Remind them that they may end up with a different teacher and in a different group from their friends. Option forms have been issued digitally this year and can be accessed from the link in the school comms sent on the 3rd of February. Completed option forms are due to be submitted by Wednesday 3rd of March. Please reassure your child that this is not a race. Forms completed tomorrow will not have a better chance of securing places on popular courses. However, on the other hand, if forms are handed in late, it may make getting first choices less likely. So what happens next? When all of the option requests are in, in, first choices are collated, which takes a little while. We then do our very best to give as many pupils as possible their first choices, but I'm afraid that this cannot be guaranteed. If a first choice is not available, I will meet with pupils individually to discuss alternatives, look at their reserve subjects and decide together upon the best compromise possible. If there is a problem, let us know and we'll try to help. Good luck everybody.